Hello and welcome to this video in the Tableau for Sports series and this time we're going to create a season dashboard. So it's going to be a relatively long video uh, but hopefully there's loads in this tips and tricks of, of how you want to apply it. Uh, I've changed sports slightly so I'm going to use AFL data but again I don't really think that should matter in terms of what we're trying to do here is just learn some techniques on how to visualize data so you can swap out the sport really for anything. So let's just have a look at the finished product of what I'm hoping to create here. So we have a finished dashboard here with title. We've got the teams in the AFL. Um, and then I've picked kind of six summary stats that we might want to look at. Again, hopefully you get the idea here. You could have more or less and change them up accordingly. And then also running along the top here, we have a form guide. So for example, I can click on Carlton. And once I click on the team, the dashboard then updates. So I can see their form across the season and I can see the various stats here. So this is game by game, how many inside 50s they had. And green means they were better than the opponent in that game. So you can see when I hover over the tooltip, round two v Melbourne, 48 v 40. So they were plus eight that week. And then the following week, they were minus six against their opponents. Okay, so it gives you an idea of a trend over the season, better or worse than the opponents and so on. And you could even drill into a game. So for example, we could click on this first round game and it then goes and highlights the dots. So this is a game we lost or Carlton lost, uh, but they were you know, slightly better across five of those metrics, but way down in, in the tackles. Okay, now again, I'm not professing that this is extremely relevant to how you would look at an AFL game or that kind of stuff. It's more about the technique of pulling together the charts. Okay. So I'm going to give you all the resources so you'll be able to download them in the video below. And we'll just have a look at all of these interactions that we can we can add. So let's fire up a blank workbook. And I'm going to go and connect to that data set. So it should be a text file. It's in my AFL and it's team stats 2020. Now this is probably another video I'll do, but just notice how the data is broken down. So it's not all of the stats, you know, kicks, handballs, marks running across. They're actually running down the page. And uh, that really does help me build this the way it's the way the data is structured. But I'll do a separate video on, on why that might be and, and how to re reorganize your data. OK, so first of all, I'm going to build that kind of line chart that we see. OK, uh, that's the first thing I want to build here. And if we jump back to the finished product, you'll actually see that, you know, this is a sheet. So it's just a KPI. And then this is a sheet, the line chart. And then we've just repeated that, obviously, five more times. So the way to do this is to get all the formatting right the first time. And then it's easy to duplicate the sheets. OK, that's the best thing. So try and get the first one right. And then it's it's just it's a simple step rather than building six from scratch. OK, so that's what we're going to do here. So we've got game round running across here now i can see that it's not quite lined up properly these pf gf is grand final and so on should be the later rounds so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click on great game round default properties and sort and i'm going to re or manually sort these so i'm going to push all of them to the end and i actually don't even know i didn't look it up but grand final i know is the last one and i'm going to go uh, semi-final is somewhere there. So that mightn't be the exact order, but again, you hopefully get the idea. Okay, so we go season across here. Um, we want to look at a team at a time. So again, I'm just going to filter this to a team. It doesn't matter which one. In this case, Adelaide. And we're looking at one particular stat. Okay, so again, let's say it's Clangers here. Okay. I've got two measures, two values here. So team, the team value and the opponent value. So first thing is I'm going to build my line, which is my team value. I'm going to change this to a line and I'm going to make the color some form of gray and I'm going to bump up the size a bit. Okay. 
So that's uh, looking good. Next thing is I want to add the dots. So you notice I had the dots here for the actual value. Now how to do that is we're actually going to create a, what's called a dual axis chart here. So I'm going to duplicate this and I could then get more marks cards over here. So you see I've one related to a line and this second one relates to the second green measure here. So these are going to be my circles and we can definitely throw the size back down. Okay. And then the steps are I want to dual axis this. So I click on the second one here and go dual axis. And just a step just to make sure is make sure these are synchronized. And this just means that 55 on the dots lines up with 55 on the lines. It looks right here, but always worth synchronizing those to make sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. So next I want to add the colors. So you notice I have a, a green if it's, it was above the opponent and the gray if it's below. So for this, I need to create a calculated field. Okay. So I'm going to right click and create a calculated field here. And I'm just going to say above opponent. And we can say is the sum of the team value greater than the sum of the opponent value. And this will simply return a true or a false. Okay, T or F. And then I can put that T or F onto the color and I should get my two colors. Okay, so let's just tidy this up. I'm going to make the line much lighter and then I'm going to go into my colors and we can say, let's pick true is that green and we'll make false that gray. Okay, so we can see now where they were better than the opponent or worse than the opponent in, in that particular game. Right, uh, next I'm going to get rid of this, so I'm going to right click and untick show header. I also want to get rid of the team value name here, just the numbers is fine. So I'm going to double click on that axis and I can get rid of the title there. Uh, I'm going to get rid of a lot of these lines, so I'm going to right click and format and let's get grid lines gone and row dividers gone and also column dividers gone. Okay, so that looks a bit better. I get rid of that label. And now I want to add in an average line across here. So for that, I'm going to go top left corner, analytics. I'm going to take my average line across the table. And then I go and edit this. So I'm going to put no label on it. I'm going to make it a dotted line. And I'm going to make it pretty dark. We could maybe even bump it up a level. Okay, so you can format that there. So that gives us our kind of average across the season. So we can really see some sort of dip in the last few games, maybe with nothing to play for here. These have dipped. Okay, what else? So that, okay. So one of the other things I did on the circles was I just added a little border, did a bit more definition. And then I want the, the title. And again, because I, I want to reduce the amount of work here, uh, what I'm going to do is double click on the title and I'm going to insert the stat name. Okay. Now I actually don't think I end up using this in my final one, but it means if I change the stat, uh, then I can, the, the title gets updated. All right. Now, one thing I do want to tidy up in here is the tooltip. Okay. So you can see as I hover over the dots, it's not extremely clear what it is. So I'm going to add quite a bit of stuff to this and then we'll go and tidy it up. So you see, I've got my tooltip here and my circle. So I'm going to go game round, opponent. Uh, we don't need to say team, but we might have team value and opponent value. Okay. 
So then I click on tooltip and we're going to look at this. So I'm going to say this is versus my opponent in the game round. So anything in the angle brackets is the data and anything else is just text that you're writing. So I'm going to get rid of that. Game round is gone. Opponent is gone. Um, yep, we're going to say team value versus opponent value. Okay, so that's the way you can kind of build up a tooltip. I think in my own example, I had an extra line, so let's go and do that. So showing what the differential is. So again, we're gonna create a calculated field for this. Uh, above, below, opponent. And again, we'll just do sum of team value minus sum of opponent value. Now, if I go too fast, obviously you can Pause and go back. So this should give us a number. Again, I'm going to add that to the tooltip. So we come in here and say plus minus the opponent. And then we'll insert the that value. So I'm just going to gray out that text a little bit so it's not too prominent. And hopefully that gives us, yeah, so we were minus 10 there. Plus seven there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's just double check here. Yeah, so it looks pretty good. Now here's what I was saying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm just going to show this filter. So these are the stats that I I took. Um. And yeah, and now what I'm going to do is I just name this, we can name this uh, Team Clangers. And now what I'm going to do is, all I need to do now is duplicate the sheet. Let's pick another stat inside 50. And to remake this chart, I just click inside 50 and I have an entirely, a second chart completely done. And then you just repeat that for the number of ones that you want. So let's say tackles. And again, I can just go and rename this as team tackles. All right. So I'm going to leave that as part one. That is beginning to build up our six line charts here with a dual axis and a, and a color added to it. So you can see all the effort goes into the first one. And I'd suggest you try and get that as good as you can because um, then you can just right click and duplicate the rest of them out and you don't have to rebuild everything each and every time and, and all the the tooltips work so it's a nice way okay so i'm going to leave that as part one part two we'll come back and build the kpis and then we'll start to put the the dashboard together so thanks for watching